Hey there folks, I'll address the elephant in the room in just a minute. Uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about what I've got in my hand here. So I have got one original copy of Pokemon Silver, and then five flash cards. Two of these flash cards are uh, SD base, you know, like Easy Flash and EverDrive, and then the other three are the, the most common real-time clock supported single game flash carts on the market and i know you can get more than one game on these sort um these things these days but realistically uh by single game i mean there's no integrated menu or anything like that you just plug it in it boots up you're good to go uh but the reason i want to talk about it is because these are three very different carts plus those uh with um Quite a, quite a different feature set, and I think it's important to make the distinction between all of them. And I've got a Game Boy Color that is mostly disassembled, partially disassembled, uh, to kind of show off what's going on here. So in this Game Boy Color, I have a single game flash cart. You can see as I turn it on, it just boots right up, goes into the game. There's no menu or anything. Uh, there is a ROM hack on this cart. I believe this is uh, crystal clear. Oh my goodness, my start button doesn't work. That's a problem. Um, yeah, it's probably crystal clear since I've got the Pokemon following me and since it went right into the game without going through the menu. Um, but this is also a single game flash cart. The exact same hardware as this thing, just different uh, color scheme going on on the silk screen. Uh, but anyway, let's go over what's going on here. So I've got an OEM cart because I want to go ahead and flash this game to all five of these cards. Well, boot it. I don't have to flash these two. Whatever, you get the idea. Uh, because I want to compare some power usage numbers here. I think it's fascinating. I think it's worthwhile to go over. And in the background here, I've got a very old computer. I know, trust me, we don't have to go into it. It's literally just here for the purpose of having a computer on an older OS, and it just so happened to be the one that I grabbed for this video. I personally use an actually supported OS, and, you know, not something that's almost 10 years old. But anyway, moving on. So before this video, I did go ahead and dump Pokemon Silver with my GBX cart RW here. Um, it's just a matter of plugging it in, firing up the Flash GBX software here, and then, you know, just works. Takes about 15 seconds to dump one of these carts. Um, pretty easy, but not the end of the world. So let's go ahead and talk about the first cart in our list here. So this is a um, standard MBC3 Flash cart. Uh, this particular version was designed by HDR and the board art, I guess. Um, not really art, I just I just kind of mimicked the actual copper layer on the silk screen. Um, that was me, I thought it was pretty neat. Um, but anyway, this one is not the version from Retro Game Repair Shop. It is more or less the proof of concept version um, before the Retro Game Repair Shop versions came along, but hardware-wise they are identical except for um, I used a different brand of Fram on here, which should make zero difference, and I used a different speed of Flash on here, which will make no difference once the game is actually running in the console, but as far as flashing a ROM to this thing, it might be a little bit slower or faster depending on what I used. I genuinely don't remember. It's been over a year since I made this thing. Um, this thing only supports two megabyte ROMs, and only MBC3 games with some MBC5 games uh, and some MBC1, I think. Whatever, don't quote me on that. Uh, but only two megabyte ROMs, so you can run like um, all of your Pokemon Gen 1 and Gen 2 games and ROM hacks based on those, except for stuff like um, that new one that just came out pretty recently, Coral, which requires a four megabyte flash cart for full compatibility. So you'd need to build an MBC30 based flash cart, which is a little bit more expensive because there's only one game that comes with an MBC30 uh, mapper in there and you need to pull the mapper out of an actual cart to make one of these flash carts. Uh, so unfortunately they are a little bit pricier because of the labor requirements and the fact that 
whoever's building it has to source a cart to build it out of, like, for example, a Pokemon game. Uh, though, generally, we use the Japanese versions, which are only a few dollars, and not the North American versions, which are a lot more than that. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, I don't think there's a game on here. Oh, I put Infinity on there, apparently. Uh, but let's put Pokemon Silver on there so that we have the exact same game. Just hit write ROM, it just detects. I'm going to grab the ROM on the desktop. Uh, should take about a minute, 50 seconds, just under two minutes to flash this thing. It's really not that bad. And while that's going, let's try and multitask here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the power supply out. and hook this up to the Game Boy so that we can get some actual power usage numbers. Um, this Game Boy is modded with an older Funny Playing Backlight Kit. Um, I don't think it's, I think it's like a 2.5 or 2.4 or older or something, I don't know. Maybe it might be 2.6. Definitely not 2.7, definitely not the current version. Doesn't matter. It's the same Game Boy we're gonna use for all the tests. Uh, and the mods aren't going to change, so as long as it's consistent, that's all that matters. It also has the funny playing um, button LED mod. Oh. And I am going to set this to 3 volts because I know some of these carts have a little bit high inrush. Uh, and on this particular Game Boy, they might fail to boot at 2.4 volts. So just to play it safe, we're going to set it to 3 volts. It doesn't matter, it's not changing. Um, I will be, I will try and be extra careful to not change the brightness between these tests. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, before, before we start with the first number, I'm going to go ahead and let this finish flashing because it is about done. One minute, 46 seconds, called that, cool. So now let's go ahead and write the save data to, oh, I hit the wrong button. We want restore. And we will, yes, adjust the RTC register. So you can see before I flashed it, the RTC was set to 163 days. After I flashed it, because the GBX can interface with the real-time clock hardware in official carts, it is now set to 130 days, just like my OEM Pokemon Silver, which is in here. Uh, so now that that is flashed, let us go ahead and start flashing uh, the next, or I'll go ahead and start flashing the Ben Ven cart here. Uh, so this next one is the Ben Ven MBC 3000 cart. In particular, I have the V3 version, um, which is now discontinued in favor of the V4 version. I don't know what the explicit difference is. Um, except that mine has um, solder pads to change the modes, whereas the V4 version has dip switches to change the modes, which is quite a bit more convenient. Um, I don't know if the instructions for the solder pads are posted on the V3 listing, but I will go ahead and post them in the description. I don't remember them offhand. I just know that there is a way to switch real-time clock hardware on and off with the solder pads so that uh, when you switch it off, you can address more of the ROM space because this thing does actually support up to eight megabyte ROMs. Uh, and yes, it is perfectly compatible with Coral. I have tested it. Uh, so we just plug it into our GBX cart, just hit um, write ROM. It automatically detects it as of this current version, which is 3.29. It detects it as the Ben Ven cart, which is nice. The older versions didn't detect it as the Ben Ben cart, but they were still able to write it anyway. There is also an issue with some, um, I don't want to call it an issue with the GBX cart itself, but is it, it is an issue that manifests in the GBX cart when you plug a Ben Ben cart into it, uh, in that the cart itself, the resettable fuse in there, or in the cart reader, the resettable fuse will overload from the inrush and then turn the GBX off. I have mine modified so that it no longer does that. Specifically, all I did was pull the fuse and replace it with a higher rated poly fuse. I think I have a 500 milliamp 
500 milliamp fuse in there, whereas the stock one is like a 250 or something like that. And I've had no issues and it is still fused. Um, I believe these things flash a little bit quicker. Um, they used to flash a lot slower, so that's nice. Uh, I remember it taking like 15 minutes on the older firmwares. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Let us get some baseline power usage numbers. So this is, again, with the OEM Pokemon Silver cart. I want to test with this game in particular instead of a ROM hack because this is the only thing that I have a, um, a an ideal example of. So in Pokemon Silver, regular game from Nintendo, no mods to the cart it's at all except that I replaced the sticker because the old one was falling off. On this Game Boy, at 3 volts, uh, the console is pulling 256 to 263 milliamps. Um, again, it's modded, so it's pulling quite a bit more power than a stock Game Boy would, um, but just want to show that it works, and indeed it does. Um, oh, look at that. 1 minute 50 seconds. Exact same as the other cart we just did. Let's go ahead and write the save data as well and adjust the RTC. You can see before I flashed it, it was set to zero days because it was not initialized. And after I flash it, you see now it is set to 130 days because the Flash GBX supports that with this cart. And before testing the next cart, let's go ahead and flash the last one, which is a newer cart from Funny Playing. Um, forgive me if you can't see that too well. I am extremely fond of the design. I think they were a little bit inspired by what I was trying to do here, except they found a manufacturer that will do this uh, Osh Park After Dark style, but in the actual board thick thickness that we need for Game Boy carts. Um, it's genuinely really good. I am absolutely loving the finish on these things. It looks sick. Uh, but anyway, specs on the funny playing cart compared to the Ben Ben cart, they're pretty much identical except that the funny playing cart does not support um, changing modes. So this only supports MBC3 games. Uh, you cannot disable the, um, the real-time clock, though you can flash up to 8 megabyte ROMs. I'm not 100% sure how that works, um, but it is always in MBC3 mode. Uh, we flash it the exact same way as the other ones, just plug it in, hit write ROM, um, and the software will try and detect what it is. It detects as a MBC5 cart uh, made by Inside Gadgets. It's not that, but you hit OK, it'll flash anyway. And we'll let that go, and we'll move on to the next game, which was the flash cart uh, made with OEM cart parts. I'm going to tuck that touch sensor in so I don't accidentally hit it. Boot it up. The power usage should be pretty much identical to OEM. So same ROM, same save, same place in the game, same time even. The Game Boy is pulling 256 to 265 milliamps, which you know, it's a little higher and a little lower, but average is about the same. Um, let's consider margin of error within 10 milliamps or so, uh, just because if I wiggle these connectors at all, it's going to change the power usage numbers. That's just how it works. It's not the best connection, but it's what we have. So keep in mind there is some margin of error, but it's basically the same power usage as an OEM cart. Um... That one's done. You see the funny playing cart flashed quite a bit quicker than all the remaining ones at one minute and three seconds. The other ones were about two minutes each. Uh, and let's write the save data. And yeah, it gives me the option to adjust RTC as well. Let's try that. Uh, and you can see before flashing it, before adjusting the RTC, the clock was set to 46 days. Afterwards, it should be set to about 130, and there it is. So now I can go ahead and hit disconnect on that. That disconnect button does the exact same thing as the physical button 
on the GBX cart. Uh, now let's go ahead and try the funny playing cart in the Game Boy here. And I have absolutely no idea what the power usage is going to be. Same ROM, same place in the game, same game. Uh, I just said that. Um, same time even. Notice the current is a little bit higher than stock. Uh, so the lows I see at about 262 milliamps, whereas the highs I just saw a peak of 272 milliamps. Uh, so on average, this looks to be about 5 to 10 milliamps higher. Um, realistically, you wouldn't notice a difference between this game and a stock game running in your Game Boy. Like, that's... what's, what's 10 milliamps among friends? Um, don't forget that doing different things in the game will change the power usage, uh, depending on what the actual CPU is doing. Um, though... Probably not by much, realistically, um, but either way, you know, basically the same. A little bit higher, not too bad, but there we have it. Let's pull that out, and let's try Ben Ven's cart now. Same ROM, same brightness, same... Same button color, everything. We boot it up, we go in-game. Same game, same time, same save. You notice the Game Boy is pulling quite a bit more current at this point. Uh, so now my lowest number is about 289, whereas the highest is about 294. Um, again, it's really not that big of a difference. You probably wouldn't notice over the grand scheme of things, like... Um, I, I genuinely have no idea what kind of battery life a console like this is going to get. Um, I guess it depends really on the batteries and what brightness you're running it at, but if we call it 10 hours, the difference between the Ben Ven cart and an OEM cart um, is probably like half an hour on that total runtime. It's not a lot. It is more. It is measurably more, but it's not bad. Next, let us show off something like an Easy Flash. So on an Easy Flash Junior, you can run the exact same game and most ROM hacks. Um, while the Easy Flash Junior does support larger ROMs, um, I think it supports up to eight megabyte ROMs, if you want real-time clock, you are limited to two megabyte ROMs only, which means you can run basically every Pokemon game and ROM hack thereof, with the exception to Pokemon Coral. Um, it is my understanding that there is no update coming to the Easy Flash to fix that issue. I have asked. I've gotten zero response back on that. Um, I don't think it's happening, unfortunately, but it, I guess it would be nice. Um, I guess the battery in my cart died at one point and I never actually reset the time. I don't know what the other carts are set to approximately, but I'm going to set it to approximately what time it is now. It's not going to keep time down to the minute, so I don't really care that much. Um, but if we look at the power usage numbers, you can see... Higher yet again. Uh, so lows of, I think I saw 307, and highs of 314, I think I saw. Um, so yet higher again on top of that Ben Ven cart. Um, if I said the other one, if I said the Ben Ven cart was a difference of like half an hour runtime, this one's probably a difference of like 40 minutes runtime. It's really not that big of a deal. It is measurably higher. Yes, you will get measurably less battery life. Yes. But it's you're still going to get, you know, more playtime out of a single charge um, or a single set of batteries than you'd likely notice, in my opinion. I personally don't sit down and play my Game Boys for, you know, longer than a few hours at a time. Um, and if you have a Game Boy that has a rechargeable battery mod, which... 
This one does not, but I have other funny playing modded ones that do. Um, you, you just charge it when you're done playing it, and next time it's good to go, fully charged, you get the full runtime. Um, but either way, it works. It's a decent option. Um, these are genuinely cheaper than... Well, actually, no. I don't know how much the Easy Flash Junior costs offhand. Uh, but among all of these options, this is like... This is not the most expensive. It's probably the second most expensive. Um, and it has way more flexibility than something like one of these single game flashcards. But... Uh, you do have that menu every single time you boot it up. Where you have to choose the ROM and go through all that. And Oh god, I see that it just adjusted the brightness. Oh, that's going to invalidate all of my tests. Oh, that's frustrating. Um, maybe it didn't adjust the brightness. Maybe it just turned the pixel grid mode off. Uh, but either way, you have this ROM menu, which isn't necessarily a deal breaker, I think, uh, but it does mean something like Pokemon Stadium is not compatible with one of these cards. Pokemon Stadium works perfectly with these bad boys, and likely with these two as well. I'm told they work, though I haven't actually tested it because I don't have a working um, cart reader for my M64. Um, let's power that off. Let's reinsert the OEM game here and see if I can't get the brightness set back to where it was based off of my power usage numbers. Uh, actually, that's peaking at 265, so I think the brightness is the same. It just disabled the um, pixel grid mode, which is fine for our testing. Because that doesn't adjust, that doesn't affect power usage very much. And last but not least, I have the EverDrive GBX7 here. I have mine in a custom housing. This particular unit is a little bit older, so it has the button on the front instead of on the top. I know there have been several hardware revisions, uh, but to my knowledge, those hardware revisions should not affect what we're testing here. And I've got Pokemon Silver on this thing, of course, with the exact same save. And so we go into the game. Same place we always are. All is well with the world. Uh, the console is pulling... 273 to 281 milliamps, uh, which is considerably lower than both the Easy Flash Jr. and Ben Ven's cart here. Um, still higher than OEM, but quite a bit lower than some of the other options out there. All right. I think that is enough of that. Let me get this out of here. And I will go ahead and arrange these in order of power usage. Oh, goodness. So, if you care considerably about power usage, obviously OEM is going to be your best bet. Uh, Nintendo designed the circuits in these things, they're extremely low power, and they do exactly what they need to do and nothing more. Uh, the rest of these carts use generic circuits that have been adapted to work in this, um, in this form. Uh, so that means there's a little bit extra overhead for the emulation that they're doing. Yes, it is emulation. This chip right here is emulating the MBC chip that is in both of these two carts. Um, these are effectively cart emulators. Not that emulation is necessarily a bad thing, but it is what it is. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to quickly go over these things um, because this funny playing cart is not actually out in the wild yet. I am one of the 
very few people who has one. Um, they sent it to me for testing and I've thrown basically everything I can at it. And so far just about everything has worked as expected. Uh, like I said, both the Funny Playing and the Ben Ven cart have full um, Prism ROM hack compatibility because they support four megabyte ROMs with real-time clock. Both the Easy Flash and EverDrive do not support four megabyte ROMs with real-time clock. I have no idea if an update is ever coming to the Junior. Um, they've been on broken firmware for years at this point without an update, so I doubt that's ever going to change. And the Easy Flash, I did ask Crix about it, and it looks like quite a few other people actually asked Crix about it as well. Uh, he said it is possible to update the firmware on the um, on the FPGA in this thing uh, to support that, but unfortunately, the FPGA used in these carts is a um, it's a one-time write uh, chip, which means. It already has the firmware on it. We can't update the firmware. Crix would have to make a brand new cart with brand new firmware, and you would have to buy another cart. Uh, and he has said that he has no plans on doing so at this time. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna change if he ever decides to make another hardware revision to fix some other unknown problem or edge case that might pop up. Um, but so far, I mean, they, they kind of just work as you'd expect them to. Um, all of the carts work perfectly fine in the analog pocket, just like they would on a Game Boy, uh, which is convenient because these things have some level shifters in there, which was actually the cause of some of the issues with these particular carts on the analog pocket, but doesn't seem to be any compatibility issues, at least with my unit. Uh, but then again, all of my flashcards worked on this thing anyway, so... Yeah, I don't know. But there you go. The more you know. Alright, uh, so I will go ahead and... Um, I think I gotta leave this video here because if I keep going I'll ramble about more stuff that doesn't quite matter too much. I will go ahead and throw links to these carts from Retro Game Repair Shop. Uh, again, it's not the exact version that I'm showing off here. It is, it is just a hair different. The pattern on the back is a little bit different. Uh, it doesn't say revision 1.4.1 on there. Uh, they're a slightly newer revision. And um, I probably did a video on assembling this thing. And if you recall me using the complete wrong size capacitors and just kind of bodging it together, well, the retail versions don't have that, trust me. <laughs> the retail versions are properly assembled, unlike this one. But this one's for me. This one's mine, and it works, and I'm okay with it. I will throw links to these bad boys down in the description. Uh, the Funny Playing Cart, like I said, it's not quite out yet. Um, Funny Playing is also making their own cart reader and Game Boy Advance flash cart, uh, and I believe the plan is to release all of them at the same time. Um, the Game Boy Color and, well, I guess original Game Boy and Game Boy Color, um, these flash carts, the one that I have in my hand, they're done and they're ready to go up. They just don't want to sell them until their cart reader is ready, which, yes, I know it's compatible with GBX cart, but they don't really care. They're trying to vertically integrate their entire um, their entire inventory. I get it. Um, I'm not happy with it, but I understand where they're coming from. It is what it is. They'll be out eventually. Uh, if I remember to, I'll try and update the video and throw a link in there for these. Um, and then the Ben Ven cart. Uh, like I said, I have the V3 version. Uh, Currently, V4 is the version that is selling if you were to buy one of these things. Uh, Hardware-wise, they should be pretty darn similar, uh, except that mine has the solder pads for um, switching modes, whereas the V4 version has um, actual dip switches. So you just pull the cart housing apart and... I don't really like these junky aftermarket housings that these carts come in, but that's easy enough to swap out. 
Oh, and I think one more thing he adjusted with the V4 version is he moved the freaking battery retainer so that you can actually open the cart without having to pry it apart. Um, because between the battery retainer and that um, clock crystal right up here, you can't slide this thing open. But there you see the two solder jumpers right there, SJ1 and SJ2. Um, leave them disconnected for MBC3 mode. Um, connect one to disable RTC and connect the other to disable, uh, to switch it from MBC3 to MBC5 mode or something like that. I don't know. Don't quote me. I'll put it in the description. Um, oh, I suppose one more thing worth mentioning. Let us sort these cards. All right, so on the left, oh, before I get too distracted, I have no idea what housing the funny playing carts are gonna come with. Um, my particular one came with a cloud game store housing and then I ended up swapping out the housing with a different cloud game store housing just because I like this color better. Um, I don't know if funny playing is making their own cases or if they're sourcing aftermarket ones. We'll find out when they actually launch. Okay, so carts on the left here. I have Easy Flash Jr., Ben Venz, MBC 3000, and then the MBC 3 Flash carts from Retro Game Repair Shop. These are all using um, an, an electroplated gold solution on the cart edge. Uh, I have personally never had any issues whatsoever with that sort of finish. Uh, but do keep in mind that it is not as durable as a hard gold finish on the uh, cart reader pins, unfortunately. It is what it is. Um, there, there are no options if you want one of these things in hard gold, unless you are willing to buy at least 100 PCBs at the same time. Um, ben Venn's cart, yeah. It is what it is, but like I said, I, I've never had any problem. I built this at least a year ago. You can see it still reads fine. I've had it in and out of multiple Game Boys. I've had multiple games splash to it. Not a single problem, but I figure it's worth mentioning. Whereas OEM carts, the Funny Playing cart, and the EverDrive all have a hard gold finish on the cart edge pins, uh, which should be a little bit more durable than the electroplated finish. Uh, just because it's literally a thicker layer of gold on the edge there. Um, again, never had any issues with any of these finishes, uh, but this particular cart, it was made at least 20 years ago. You can see it's still working totally fine. Uh, so hard gold is, is the way to go for longevity. Um, but it's a wear and tear thing, so if this cart has fewer insertion cycles on it than any other cart, you know what I'm trying to get at. Um, just wanted to mention it. Otherwise, I think that's about all I've got. Um, the real stars of the shows there are those two bad boys. Really neat carts if you're into Pokemon ROM hacks uh, or any other Game Boy and Game Boy Color games that use real-time clock, which I don't know of any that aren't Pokemon, so don't don't get angry at me if, if they exist. I I know there are Game Boy Advance games that have real time clock that aren't Pokemon, specifically Boktai. <laughs> um, but beyond that, not a lot of things used real time clock. It just it wasn't that popular, and it significantly decreased the battery life of the save battery. Um, which oh, every single one of these. Every single one of these has FRAM, which means that the battery is only required for real-time clock. Um, if the battery dies, it still saves just fine, zero issues there. Um, you just have to reset your clock every single time you boot the card up. It's frustrating, but it is what it is. All three of these, the Easy Flash Jr., Ben Ben's cart, and the Funny Playing cart, all use a CR1220 battery. Um, I have actually done a separate video on that all link it in the description if I have it published before this one goes up. Um, or I'll try and remember and go back. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, the EverDrive, however, has SRAM. So if the battery dies, um, saving's gonna be a little bit more difficult because normally you have to reboot the game to 
copy the save from the internal memory to the SD card. Uh, but with the EverDrive, you have that little button you can press to go back to the menu. So it's uh, it, it behaves like FRAM as long as you don't have to reboot the as long as you don't turn the console off to take care of that. And then OEM carts, of course, have neither of those functions. So if the battery dies, you lose your save. It is what it is. Um, you can't you can't power off the cart and expect it to hold save data when the battery is dead. So that means every single time you power it off with no battery, your save gets wiped. And of course, your real-time clock isn't running. But if you're one of those um, hardcore Nuzlocke players, you could just never turn your Game Boy off and it would work fine until you do turn your Game Boy off. Uh, but anyway, at this point, nope, one more thing I gotta discuss. Bear with me. I'll be brief, very brief, I promise. I have a lot of flashcards, as you can tell. Um, I have basically every cart reader that is on the market at this point, uh, except for, you know, older versions of um, GBX cart, which this is an older version, but it's a 1.3. I used to have a 1.2, but I think I got scammed out of that. Um, I have my own ones, but most importantly, I have... Ooh, I thought it was at the top. There it is. I have a Joey Gen 3. This is Ben Ben's cart reader. The Joey Gen 3 is not compatible with Ben Ben's flash cart. That it, it's been discontinued. There have been no firmware updates. It just doesn't work with that flash cart. There is an option to get Junior 4 Gen 3 firmware for your Joey Gen 3, and this is a legit Joey Gen 3. I bought the firmware upgrade for it. Um, at the time I bought it, it also did not support uh, Ben Ben's flash cart. So if you want to stick, you know, Ben Ben's flasher and Ben Ben's flash cart, you need a uh, Joey Jr. I believe he has since revised his strategy and has started shipping uh, Junior 4 Gen 3 firmware with support for this flash cart, uh, but I have not, I genuinely have not tested it because the method for doing so is somewhat tedious, um, and I just, I prefer the GBX cart. You, you click write ROM, it just detects it and writes the ROM. Like, it is what it is. Whereas this one, you have to go look up the special code. It's like, um, it's like an eight-digit random alpha numeric blah blah blah. You have to change the mode in the thing, save the mode to the mode.txt file, and then you can reflash it and then you gotta change the mode back so it supports other carts again. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not into it. Um, and then of course there are the Sani cart readers. This is a terrible example because that looks like nothing, nothing like the one I currently make. Um, this looks a little bit closer. Uh, this thing is it dead? Is it dead? It's dead. Of course it is. It doesn't have the Game Boy adapter on it anyway. Um, this thing doesn't support either of the Funny Playing or Ben Ben carts, uh, but it does support, um, well, it doesn't support Easy Flash or Underdrive, but no flash cart, no cart reader does. Uh, but it does support the HDR carts and OEM carts, of course. Um, the funny playing cart reader, which is coming eventually, uh, is based very heavily upon this design, uh, which is based off of Sani's cart reader. Um, they have added support for their cart. I doubt it supports Ben Ben's cart, but we'll try it when I, uh, when I get a sample here. Um, but until then... I think GBX cart is still the way to go. Um, the Epilog cart, GB operator, doesn't support either of these. I mean, you can play games off them, but you can't flash them. Maybe they'll add support at some point. Maybe they'll add support for both versions of the e-reader, or all three versions of the e-reader, because right now, as far as I can tell, only one version is supported. I don't have the third version to test, so don't quote me on that. I have the English version and the Japanese e-reader plus. I don't have the Japanese e-reader. 
uh, but I can only write saves to one of those two, and I don't remember which offhand. Doesn't matter. Let's not get off topic. Um, anyway, I will also go ahead and throw a link down in the description for a um, GBX Cart RW. Um, as of the time of filming, I believe they're out of stock, but it is what it is. They'll restock eventually. Anyway, that's all I've got, and uh, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for sticking with me.